Welcome back to Woman to Woman, Conversations in Black and White. I'm Bernadette. And I'm Linda. And we've chosen to share these conversations across racial lines to encourage others to have these same sorts of conversations across racial lines on sensitive topics. With the purpose being to help us to see each other's humanity and feel it in our hearts and to just connect directly with each other. Yeah. With that in mind, tonight's topic, um, November 2nd, tomorrow is election day. And it is a lot of angst across the country. You would honestly think that we were a third world country or a relatively new nation, as fearful as people are for the results from election. You would not think that we have been in existence since 1776 and we've had 45 presidents. You just wouldn't think that. You know, people are boarding up stores, people are hoarding groceries, black people in particular are trying to make sure they have all that they need in case it's not safe for them to leave their homes. Wow. Yeah. We are not in either way this goes. It will, it will probably be a tumultuous next couple of months. Mm -hmm. Either way it goes. Yeah, I think, yeah. Sadly, I think you're probably right. Yes. Yeah. And even with that, I hope it is, I hope the nation speaks. For us to have 70% of the vote, people who voted last time have already voted the day yes, before election day. Mm -hmm. The 90 million people who have already voted. So Americans are saying something and we're saying it loudly. Right. So we just got to hope and see what that something is. Yeah. Right. Right. Mm -hmm. I agree. I agree. So, do you have any personal, not that I'm the interviewer here because I'm not, this mm -hmm. is truly a conversation, yes. but do yes. you have any personal accounts of, of um, people feeling afraid? I know I feel some fear and I'm white and live in the suburbs and I'm pretty safe, mm -hmm. but I'm not immune to picking up on that fear energy. Do you have any specifics that you feel comfortable sharing? Uh, my daughter's scared. She texted me today and she goes, mama, as you can see on different social media, she's like, mama, they're saying if Biden wins, then there's, then a lot of white people are going to go out and just hurt black people at random. Mm -hmm. And she's 16. So this is, this is what is out there. And, and she is scared. Yeah. Mm -hmm. She has every right to be, whether, mm -hmm. whether those are empty threats or, or solid threats, we don't know, but the very fact that they're threats is a real thing. Right. But I mean, yeah. if, you, if you look at it, we have had racial unrest all summer. We've had coronavirus. Children are not at school. They're trying to do distance learning. And then there's this. Mm -hmm. Right. This is a tremendous amount for people, for adults to have to contend with, let right. alone children. Yeah. Right. And teenagers mm -hmm. are kind of caught in the crossfire because the little ones probably pick up on the fear energy, but they may not be quite as aware of all the details. In some families, right. in some families mm -hmm. they might, mm -hmm. but teenagers are going to get the, the full get brunt. It. Yes. It, it, there's no escaping that. They, mm -hmm. They're gonna pick it up and know what's going on. Yes. So I'll well, tell mm -hmm. her my heart hurts for her and I'm sorry that she's mm -hmm. having to go through this. It's a hard, yeah. it's a hard time, so. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Um, well, I have my own white friends get it and everybody's on board, but I mm -hmm. have people in my larger circle that don't get it. And I find myself mm -hmm. constantly dismayed and shocked at their perspective on things. And, um, mm -hmm. I don't, I don't even know what to do about it. It's, it's like my words don't really impact them in an actual conversation. But one thing that I, I do in that situation is I try to educate myself further. And you and I were talking about it a little bit earlier that, that when I begin to educate myself deeply about the, right. the racial issues in this country, it's like, no surprise that things are where they are. There's been mm -hmm. a long history of suppression and violence and intimidation. And yes. the fact that it didn't always make the headlines was just because some of us were white and weren't paying that much attention. 
right. uh, mm -hmm. including the newspapers, or perhaps uh, the people that did care were intimidated also. There is right. that possibility. Mm -hmm. So that's one thing I've been doing. And I, I was sharing on Facebook yesterday that I, I'm cleaning out um, stuff as we reshuffle our home. Yes. And this is um, a National Geographic that had caught my attention some time back. And uh, if you can see it, it's the July 1984 copy. Okay. And its oh, feature cover story the is Railroad. the history of the Underground Railroad. Yes. In this particular, now I've known about the Underground Railroad, and one of my favorite songs ever is the one that's associated with that, which is Follow the Drinking Gourd. Drinking about, Gourd. Mm -hmm. yeah. But that's, of course, sort of romanticized, and you can think, well, that was a couple of hundred years ago. Things like that mm -hmm. aren't really an issue. But you read this, and you read the headlines, this is a 30 plus page article in here. Oh, and wow. Awesome you article read, from you. There's a lot and there's documentation mm -hmm. and it's written by the uh, couple of black men, okay. but it's written by the great grandson of a slave who escaped when he was a teenager and okay. escaped out of Delaware and to the North and made it to Canada. Uh, and there's rarely there are um, actual documentation pieces about him. Yes. Usually it was lost and families didn't choose to talk about it because it was too right. upsetting. Yes. But there are. And the, mm -hmm. the intimidation and the, um, um, the brutality and the fact that the South bullied the North into the fugitive slave law to where if Southern slaves did escape into the North after the fugitive slave law, which was a trade like, okay, this state will come in as a free state only if all of you Northerners uh, will return slaves to us if they make it to the North. And well, that, that makes it sound nice and clean because in actuality they were, they would take free black people any well black that people, too and enslave them yes mm -hmm. right exactly that too but it was called the fugitive slave law and yes. prior uh -huh. to that there was some safety in the north and after that there was no safety in the north and mm -hmm. so people had to go all the way to canada and the legacies of that over the generations are just phenomenal yes. the the brutality the legacies the loss of of any um wealth that a black family might have created right. that's mm -hmm. that's another topic for another day i know that's a big topic but mm -hmm. it's um touched upon in here briefly too so anyway welcoming your comments too bernadette i mean that's there was i'm i'm trying to choose just one because there are so many different parts of it and many of it is interwoven but aside mm -hmm. from even just lack of being able to pass on generational wealth, just even lack of having a puzzle or a tree that showed who we were from here to there. Right. Are, have been completely fractured. And not even just from the original, from Africa and the homeland, but even here in the United States, every chance that that could be fractured, it was. Right. Yeah. And so you have souls that can't find who they're supposed to be tied to. And we have, and you have no idea how to put those pieces together. Yeah. So it wasn't just money. I mean, they're familiar loss, familial losses familial that will loss. never, yeah, that will never be recovered. Right. Yeah. The ancestors have become invisible, not through choice, but through um, separation and brutality or yes. rape um, in uh -huh. many cases. And if mm -hmm. a family does know who it was, that feels fractured in itself to know yes. that there were rapes, maybe even multiple generational rapes that yes. contributed to who the person is today. Yes. And uh -huh. uh, uh, so mm -hmm. it's, it's pretty intense to, for a white person to begin to dive deeply into that. One thing I find strange is I've had these conversations with you these last few months and mm -hmm. uh, is the idea of Black History Month that in, in Black History Month, we should focus on <laughs> Oh, what the black people went through. But mm -hmm. 
when you dig a little deeper, you realize that in the United States of America, black people and white people are interwoven mm -hmm. regardless of the goodness or badness of it. It is, it mm -hmm. is that way. Mm -hmm. And the unpaid slave labor that contributed to the cultures and the, the black communities that were wiped out because they got too wealthy and too powerful and they were just mm -hmm. deleted and then nobody writes about them because it's too scary to write about them and so most people forget that they ever existed right. and it's like this is part of american history mm -hmm. but you think it's taught in an ordinary classroom no no, no. never ever mentioned and mm -hmm. the the whitewashed version is there were slaves. That was not a really good thing, but it's over now. And then there mm -hmm. was a few lynchings, but that's over now too. And we're mm -hmm. all just one happy family. Uh -huh. And the illusion of that is just, it's depressing to acquaint myself with that. And I'm sorry, white friends, but it should be depressing to all of us to acquaint ourselves with that. And to realize that it's all tied together. And then, then of course, there's other people of color in the indigenous nations. We, we are all tied up with all of that. And to make American history about the white colonists and their descendants is just really obscene. I'm sorry, but it really is obscene. Mm -hmm. it, it needs to be about all of this and the glory and the bad stuff. And we need to somehow find our way into to reconciling that in our hearts yes. and then with each other. Mm -hmm. I don't have an answer. This is not an answer. This is a conversation. It is no and I I have I have never liked the term Black History Month. Never. Even when I was a child. Mm -hmm. Because the premise was, okay, black people only contributed to society in February. No, that is not true. And we have been here for four hundred and one years now. Mm -hmm. Yet we're only spoken of in February. And there are only a few that are spoken of consistently. Dr. King, Rosa Parks, John Lewis, and then there was that one guy who didn't turn the other cheek, Malcolm X. But we always speak about the ones that may, that are more palatable for white people to deal with. Everyone loves the I have a dream speech. Dr. King was keenly aware of the injustices that white people had purposely put on right. black people. So the I have a dream speech is nowhere near a culmination or a conclusion to all that he thought or felt or even spoke. But we rarely go into his other speeches or right. his writings that he did in peer reviewed journal articles or any of his books. We rarely speak about that side of Dr. King. We don't speak about the other people who didn't get up. Rosa Parks wasn't the first one who didn't refuse to get up out of her seat. There were many before her who did not get up. But she was the, but for whatever reason, she was the breaking point. And so that's how her name became famous. But there were people bef before Dr. King, there was Meg Evers, there was, yes. there was um, Mary McLeod Bethune. I mean, there were many people that had been working on this for years that we never get to hear about. And to part and parcel it off as if this is what you guys have done and all the rest of this has been on us. When in fact, in the 1800s, the fourth largest industry that created the most wealth in the world was in the South from cotton and sugar plantations. Wow. Not in the nation, in the world. Mm -hmm. And that came specifically off the backs of slaves. Yes. You know, there's a quote in here that, that was hard for me to swallow, and it will still be hard for me to swallow, but let okay. me share it, and then maybe we can leave tonight. Not that it's settled, but hey, there's mm -hmm. an election day tomorrow, and we got to get our rest, huh? So Yes. <laughs> All right. This is from the article that I referenced before. Okay. And it is... If, if we think that people are talking crazy right now to rationalize um, unjust positions, well, mm -hmm. this has been going on a long time. And here is, here's some quotes from this particular illustration here. Okay. National Geographic. Slavery 
known as the peculiar institution, required unconditional submission. As one planter wrote, we teach them they are slaves, that to the white face belongs control and to the black obedience. As planters became increasingly concerned with perpetuating and spreading the system of slavery, more Northerners began to oppose the presence of chattels in the, a land of liberty. With convoluted reasoning, the South rebutted with this. And here's the quote. The person of the slave is not property, but the right to his labor is property and may be transferred like any other property. Mm. The person of the slave is not property, but mm. the right to his labor is property and may be transferred like any other property. Mm -hmm. I, mean, I don't even know what to say to that. That's how the South was justifying it when they had to deal with objections from the North. You're owning people. Yeah. You shouldn't be owning people. They say, we don't own no. people. Own mm -hmm. all their labor. That's all. Yes. Mm -hmm. And so that fits in with your comment of what you were saying about how much wealth was produced by this yes. free labor for yes. other people, not for, yes. them, for themselves. Yes. Yes. The, four, yes. the fourth wealthiest this, yeah, area on the entire globe was right. in the South. Mm -hmm. oh. And well, so- I don't have anything hopeful to end on, except that I'm grateful to be talking with you, Bernadette. Yes. Oh. And, hope, well, and well, there's still an election that we're gonna hold out hope for that. And you know, right. we'll see. Right. Either way it goes, I, I sincerely hope that people continue to have these conversations because even if Biden wins, there are so many things that we have honestly got to sit down at kitchen tables, I guess with masks right. on or on Zoom, and have conversations with people about. Seriously. I agree. We have, we're going to sit down at the kitchen table or on the back deck or wherever right. and have these conversations. Which is why you and I are doing it. And for those who may not have seen our first episode, we live about, um, if you count the houses, she's number five, if mine is number one, three yes. in between. Mm -hmm. And um, we do spend time on front porches and decks together. Yes. But we're doing our job at socially distancing. And so when we get together, we wear masks or we sit outdoors. And this yes. is our way of having these important conversations and getting them out to the world. So, mm -hmm. so we encourage you to like and subscribe go back check out our other videos like and subscribe share them on facebook tell your friends about it and start your own circles we need more circles of just regular people sitting down and have an honest come we'll get it done we will get it done we will figure it out we got a lot going on this week but we'll be back this week so thank All you right. for watching thank you for watching good night <laughs>